I want to just clear up a couple things. First, I heard the very distinguished general lady from Colorado mention job creators. I assume she was responding to President Biden since 12 million new jobs have been created under President Biden, whereas millions of jobs were lost under the prior president, um, who may be a favorite of the general ladies. I also wanted to make a, just a brief semantic point because the general lady was making a, gram a grammatical error that I heard some of her colleagues make before. Um, I believe she referred to a Democrat solution. I heard another member talk about a Democrat member and a Democrat plan. I just wanted to educate our distinguished colleagues that Democrat is the noun. When you use it as an adjective, you say the Democratic member or the Democratic solution or the Democratic plan. And so I assume it's a good faith grammatical error the first few times. But after people are corrected several times, and they continue to say it, it seems like it's an act of incivility, as if every time we mentioned the other party, it just came out with a kind of political speech impediment, like, oh, the Banana Republican Party, as if we were to say that every time we mentioned the Banana Republican member, or the Banana Republican plan, or the Banana Republican conference. But we wouldn't do that. So out of pure political courtesy, when it's an adjective, refer to the Democratic Congresswoman or the Democratic member. My God, the extent to which Lauren Boebert will never be prepared for Jamie Raskin cannot be overstated. If you ever wondered what it would look like if the 1990s Chicago Bulls played your high school junior varsity team, this is what it would look like. Here, Jamie Raskin brings up a number of great points, the first of which is this refrain from within the Republican Party that somehow there's some authority on jobs creation. And of course, this talking point has persisted for years and years, but in reality, there hasn't been a single Republican administration in more than 30 years that's created more jobs than a Democratic administration. I mean, seriously, the last Republican president literally branded himself the jobs, jobs, jobs president, and that guy lost more jobs than any other president in modern American history. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, who never once had to publicly fillet himself as a jobs creator, created more jobs in one term than any other president in history, and he did it in only two years. All of which is to say, don't listen to what Republicans say, watch what they do. And I gotta be honest, based on the numbers, it ain't much. Raskin then goes on to hit Republicans on their desperate attempts to turn Democrat into a pejorative. And if you're wondering where this started, I hope you're sitting down for this. It's with this guy. And you see them all the time. They're Democratic run. You know, I always say Democrat. You know why? Because it sounds worse. They should actually change their name to the Democratic. Democrat sounds lousy, but you know what? That's actually their name. The Democrat Party. Right? The Democrat Party. So I always say Democrat. They say Democratic. I said, why don't you try changing your name officially? But the lawless demonstrators, and they are, they're all Democrat-run cities and states. That's all. Trump thinks that Democrat Party sounds bad, and so he says Democrat Party, and because the rest of the GOP is a bunch of obedient lapdogs who couldn't conjure up an original thought if they tried, now they just regurgitate the same thing. But a couple of things here. First, pretending that a noun is an adjective isn't so much an insult to the Democrats as it is proof that Republicans have no grasp of the English language. Here's what I always find funny. Republicans used to demand that English be the national language in this country up until the point that they started electing people like Donald Trump and Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, at which point it became clear that advocating for English as a national language might not be a great idea when the faces of their party can't actually speak it. But second, as Raskin mentioned, it's not like the Democrats can't do the same thing if Republicans really want to turn the entire U.S. government into this Trump-inspired playground bully cesspool. If they really want the culmination of this 246-year experiment that is the United States of America to just be a bunch of grown-ass adults lobbing cringy nicknames and dumb monikers around. Then again, it's not like the culmination of this 246-year experiment isn't already at an all-time low, considering the leader of the Republican Party just incited an insurrection against our own government. So at this point, I guess Republicans really have made sure that they're just keeping the bar no higher than the floor. And to be clear, this wasn't even the only time that Jamie Raskin took aim at Lauren Boebert. Here he is again making short work of her during an oversight hearing. Um, you're right, President Trump was in office when the COVID virus was released from a lab in, in China, from the Wuhan lab. And he tried to make that very clear that this came from China. And reporters regularly 
dismiss that. I appreciate the gentlelady's passion. There are two facts that she should perhaps be alerted to. One is that Donald Trump, on more than 20 different occasions, defended the performance of the Chinese government, and specifically um, President Xi, in terms of his treatment of COVID-19, and said he was doing a wonderful job and a great job, and they were working closely, and they were constantly in touch. So if there's a problem with the Chinese government unleashing a virus, which has not been proven anywhere, but it certainly could be true, you would have to pin that on your uh, favorite president, Donald Trump, not on Joe Biden. The second thing is President Trump's own special advisor on COVID-19, Deborah Birx, I'm sure you're aware and you're, I'm sure you've read her book, uh, said that the lethal recklessness of Donald Trump's policies about COVID-19 cost Americans hundreds of thousands of lives. So you don't have to believe anybody on the Democratic side of the aisle. That's Donald Trump's own special advisor on COVID-19. Now, the FBI director had come out this week and said that the Energy Department assessment is that the cause of the pandemic was, quote, most likely a leak from a lab in Wuhan. I should note, too, that four other agencies still judge the pandemic as likely being the result of natural transmission. Two agencies beyond that are undecided, all of which is to say, no one really has any answers about the origins of COVID. But regardless, Republicans have seized on this as some victory for them because it retroactively validates some fear mongering about China by Trump. But as Jamie Raskin mentioned, among the biggest cheerleaders for China during his presidency was Donald Trump. He'd post tweets like this. China has been working very hard to contain the coronavirus. The United States greatly appreciates their efforts and transparency. It will all work out well. In particular, on behalf of the American people, I want to thank President Xi. So I get that Republicans are desperate for a win, but I'm not sure that pointing to the guy who spent the early days of the pandemic regurgitating Chinese talking points is the win that they think it is. Beyond that, irrespective of China, I'm not sure how Republicans can point to anything COVID related as a win. Remember, prior to vaccine availability, the excess death rate among Democrats and Republicans was roughly even. But once we were in the post vaccine period, the excess death rates for Republicans was about 76% higher than for Democrats. How Republicans can look at the hundreds of thousands of people who died due to some misguided partisan allegiance and still claim victory on anything related to the pandemic really does put their delusion on full display. These Republican officials should be apologizing to the families of the victims, not taking some stupid victory lap because they may be able to pin blame on China for the origin of the virus. And yet that's their priority, scoring a political win no matter how many lives it costs. And yet, despite all of this, Boebert's positions here really are indicative of a larger problem on the right, and that is that they operate within their own hermetically sealed ecosystem, devoid of any facts. And so even though Jamie Raskin schooled her virtually every time she opened her mouth, as far as Boebert's concerned, she notched a win because she got to utter the mad libs that make up Republican positions these days. And she'll get her cable hit on Fox and other right-wing channels, and those anchors won't show Jamie Raskin's responses because it's not about reality, it's about feeding the audience a narrative. And we already know, thanks to the Dominion lawsuit, that Fox and the greater right-wing media ecosystem will gladly lie to its viewers' faces if it means perpetuating the narrative further. Which is just one more reason why, in a political environment full of Lauren Boeberts, always listen to Jamie Raskin. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.